So thank you so much for coming back and checking out another episode of Norgiz. I'm your host, Tanisha Hallman. And joining me today for some exciting, energetic, Nork-based discussion is Medina, founder of Equal Space. Um, you guys know him, seen him around town. He is um, a Nork son, adopted son, if you want to say. And uh, Medina, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk uh, about all things Newark. Yes, as am I. Um, this has been a long time in the making. Um, because you're busy, you have a ton going on, um, lots of stuff that you've been moving and shaking on, and we will. D I definitely want to have a chance to dive into that, but I think that um, where we should probably kind of kick things off, because I know myself, um, I know that I'd always seen you around before we started working on a professional level, um, crossing with some clients and what have you, we've seen each other. Um, and everything. Yes. <laughs> and then it's like usually the head nod, the hug. Right. Like, How are you? Right. It progressively like we're like we're speaking. It's like okay, let's. Then we started working together on things. Fast. Um, and yeah. For long periods of time. Exactly. Exactly. So I knew I'm like okay, this this guy is dope. Um, we need to get him in and talk to him. And really, I have to say, hear your backstory. How did Medina come to be? And more importantly, how did you come to be here? In, in the city of Newark. So um, if you don't mind, I'll just dive right in and ask and let you know what's been on my mind. So, you know, I think that when people see you, they ought, like, you know, you, you have presence, you have presence, you have personality um, and all true, all true things. I hear nothing but good things about you, but people don't know where you're from. I know you're from Brooklyn and you definitely have a Brooklyn vibe, right? You got that, that Brooklyn swag. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I was just curious, um, what inspired a young man from Brooklyn to become an entrepreneur? So this is a, a really good layered story. So I always dreamed of owning my own agency mm -hmm. but not an agency the way everyone thought like that we would do everything I really fell in love with doing and producing the work and mm -hmm. contributing to the vision of a marketing campaign okay. like I was able to translate and I was able to research and understand the market and then produce that visually and through written copy okay. which is how we met right and Absolutely. that work was really great but very culture limiting back we'll talk about my agency is 12 years old mm -hmm. so 12 years ago is a different landscape they weren't embracing diversity. you know diversity yeah. or flexible working mm -hmm. or you know flex time those things just weren't present mm -hmm. and i always dreamed of owning my agency that did the work we outsourced so much back then yes. everywhere everyone every agency was like i was dealing with malaysia i was dealing with you know ireland i was dealing with the uk and those time differences and those cultural differences really bear a uh, heavy burden on the creative director mm -hmm. to translate and make it happen so i want to start an agency and i did i started medina city in a basement in brooklyn with mm -hmm. my business partner Raphael mm -hmm. who's still my business partner today mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and we were in a basement in Brooklyn it was so small you had to ask permission to get up <laughs> that's like we were back to back like when we say we got each other's back it's because we literally have had each other's back right and um year one we took on a fair amount of agency work I had already had 15 years in the game so okay. people were very excited mm -hmm. um to see a, a person of color stepping out in this agency world mm -hmm. and one of my clients uh was Cory Booker and we took a meeting about campaign work and okay. now was this uh this was cory booker be for, pre okay before he was this elected is getting mayor before getting he married ran. up this is okay. getting mayor okay. of okay. cory booker okay. and um i had the pleasure of working with this beautiful core team and mm -hmm. then um you know it was this conversation of you should come to new york and mm -hmm. i was like cory Casket first. That's how I'm leaving Brooklyn. Like mm, that's how committed picked. you were. Yeah, right? I was like, I don't as most see Brooklyn, it. Brooklyn Brooklynites are. Yeah. right? like, mm -hmm. like hardcore. Yeah, Brooklyn for life. For life, you're yeah. not going. And so uh, he was like, "No, you know, it's a, it's a chance to rebuild a great American city." And to, <laughs> he pitched you. Know, try, you. Yeah, he was, it was just like this wonderful conversation. How could you not like? So I said, "You know what? I'll, I'll go and take a tour." It took. Four hours, 20 days later, I moved my life and my agency to Newark. Wow. And committed. So I have to ask you, d aside from what Cory Booker was able to, him convincing you to even come, right? To just give it a chance to just come see what was happening here. Once you, guy, because we're talking 
10 years ago. We're talking 12 years ago. 12 now, years ago. Of Newark, a very so different it looked, Newark. Yeah, it looked very different. And then my recollection of Newark was even further back because my recollection of Newark was 2003, 2002 Newark mm-hmm. because I went to school at FDU. Okay. So my experience in Newark was very, very different even then because you came here and there were house parties mm-hmm. and it was like a very... Um, a city really in need of love yeah. and the c- yeah. citizens were love in themselves, but they needed some work. So when I came here again with new eyes, with like entrepreneurship eyes, right. I saw a great black American city that mm-hmm. reflected my cultural mm-hmm. identity. I saw a political landscape that was fiercely multicultural right. and I saw all the recipes and the buildings and the location to make it a great city. And I'm a strategist at heart. So you give me an underdog and I'm going to like run with oh, it. I love that you use the word underdog. So you saw the opportunity. Oh, I did because yeah. just think about it. I'm in Brooklyn and that's the very beginning of Brooklyn's gentrification. It was becoming mm-hmm. harder for me to keep my business running, keep my office. We were becoming very profit oriented at my mm-hmm. space and mm-hmm. less people focused interior and exterior and that's not about I, I i know from from getting to know you that that's the exact opposite of of what you want to personify so because we have the pressure is like we have payroll we have these things so right. we just naturally the pressure was there mm-hmm. i came to newark i doubled my square footage i doubled my team i changed our entire culture mm-hmm. and i was able to do some really beautiful things off the bat as soon as i came into the city mm-hmm. and you got to earn new workers love you got to oh, like yes <laughs> beg and they're, they're, you got to earn their trust you got to earn their respect and then you then comes the love i feel like i just got it though i feel like new workers are just like oh he's here to stay <laughs> like he's 12 never years leaving. um well no david i i i can definitely attest to why they embraced you though cuz you know what it is you just want to know that you're someone that's genuine and I think once they got that... And we have trauma. New York oh, carries yes. a very heavy burden of trauma of people Without coming. And, you know, I think that's Jersey's story, actually, mm-hmm. funny enough. But Newark is a very mm-hmm. particular, beautiful city with all these wonderful resources that has been, you know, really taken advantage of. Yeah. So I understood what I had to earn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.